Insider's Health News recently brought you one expert's take on the issue of attachment parenting and extended breastfeeding, as prompted by the recent cover article in Time magazine. Now we're going to the source in a one-on-one -on -one interview with the man who changed motherhood, attachment parenting guru, Dr. Bill Sears. Well, the obvious topic of conversation today is all about this recent buzz in the media surrounding the concept that you coined and literally wrote the book on, Attachment Parenting. So we thought, who better to give us the explanation as to what this entails exactly? Jim, the, the, the term attachment parenting is a term uh, Martha and I coined around 1980 when we started writing books. And a very simple explanation is, suppose you were on an island uh, you and your baby, uh, mom and dad and baby, were on an island. There was no one around, no baby books, no experts, no mother-in-laws, no psychologists, no doctors, and you just, uh, oh, the only expert you had was you. Right. Attached with parenting is what you would naturally do just from your gut instinct. It's mm -hmm. parenting from the heart, from the gut, and these these seven baby bees that we, we listed are a list of, of tools. They're not rules. They're what we call connecting tools. They're, they're starter tips. You, you choose as many of these baby bees as you can, and as often as you can, as long as you can, and that's all your baby will ever expect. Mm -hmm. So you have to listen to yourself, what your instinct is telling you, and then you just use those as guidelines, like you said, not uh, rules. Just whatever suits you. Exactly. Okay. They're, they're, they're just guidelines, and um, like the, the, the baby bees, I call birth bonding. You, you, you keep your baby with you as, often, as much as you can, unless there's a medical complication. Mm -hmm. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding as often and as long as you and baby can. Mm -hmm. Baby wearing. Next baby bee. Uh, wear your baby in a baby carrier, a sling. Babies love to be warm more than wheeled. Uh, bedding close to baby. Babies love to be close to their mom at night. Uh, in a, say, a co sleeper, for example. And uh, beware of baby trainers. These let them cry it out crowd. Mm. Uh, beware of those. And then we added another one we called balance. Balance means uh, knowing when to say yes to your baby, knowing when to say no, knowing when to give to your baby, and when to give to yourself so you don't get burned out. Mm -hmm. And then the belief in baby's cries, instead of letting baby cry it out, uh, which people say, you, you believe that a baby's cry is a baby's language designed for the mutual trust between mom and baby. Because the only person in the whole world who can answer when and if and how quickly to answer a baby's cry is that person who shared an umbilical cord with the baby, and that is mother. Mm -hmm. Because a mother has a built-in sense of how to read her baby's cry. So for some outside third party to say, only 10 minutes or something like that, or you're mm -hmm. going to spoil your baby. That's utter nonsense. Mm -hmm. And in regards to breastfeeding, somebody telling you only feed for a certain time, you're saying that is up to the mother and what she feels. That is absolutely up to the mother. And here, here in the United States, we, we're used to thinking of breastfeeding in terms of, of months instead of years. Mm -hmm. But you go around the world, and it's brought up in terms of years. For example, the World Health Organization, a very trusted authority, recommends, and I'll quote, breastfeed for two years and beyond in the mm -hmm. books. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends for at least a year. So we, we need to sort of up our standard of how long, and I tell my, I, I don't put a time limit on it, as long as mom and, and, and baby enjoy it, Mm -hmm. Great, and babies will win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I feel like a lot of the opponents are saying, and again, this is just a devil's advocate, that if you extend breastfeeding for a certain amount of time, it could delay the emotional development of the child. Now, what's your take on this? I, I, yes, I hear that criticism, Jim, but it's just the opposite. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I've studied attachment parenting now for 40 years. This is my 40th year in pediatric practice. And I've seen how these kids generally turn out. They turn out to be emotionally secure. Mm-hmm. They're independent, but in a normal way. They are trusting. But the biggest quality in how attachment parenting kids turn out is they have empathy. These are kids who care. I've never seen a school bully who, who's been attachment parented. And I have to assume that you know you're a father to eight, so do you do raise your children in this manner? Yes, we have, and, and we have eight children, Kim, but we've evolved with this. We, mm-hmm. we started as young parents, and fortunately my, my wife Martha, a nurse, she, she uh, just parented from the gut, and, and uh, uh, I remember her throwing away an old, uh, an old baby book written years <laughs> ago when it said, now, uh, you put him in a crib and let him cry, yep. so they trained themselves to sleep, and she pitched the book in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it wasn't for her, apparently. No, I do want to touch upon the most recent issue, which is the Time Magazine article. Now, you're receiving a lot of acclaim. Time Magazine is calling you the attachment parent guru. In another re- more recent article, the man who remade motherhood. So what's your take on these roles that they're assigning you? <laughs> well, you know, we, we, uh, one thing you need as a parent and a pediatrician is a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, <laughs> we sort of uh, uh, laugh a bit about it, but I think uh, Time Magazine, they, they, they made the point that, they, that people need to read it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they perhaps portrayed it, attachment parenting as extreme and picked out the few uh, moms who maybe carry it to extreme. But, for example, the cover mom, Jamie, mm-hmm. the very intelligent, well-educated mom with the degrees in, in uh, anthropology, nutrition, theology, she, uh, this is an educated mom, a cover mom. Now, it's not the cover I would have chosen, but okay. certainly it worked for time. It really mm-hmm. got people thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think that they could have done something differently, uh, or if it was good to get that shock value out, maybe get the dialogue going? Yes, I think in, in retrospect, it worked. Mm-hmm. It, it had enough shock value to, got people, to get people to read the article. Mm-hmm. And... Um, maybe rethink about how babies start in life. Mm -hmm. So I do have to touch upon another thing that got a lot of media attention. This isn't the first time that attachment parenting was in the limelight. Uh, It got buzzed recently when practicing mother Alicia Silverstone posted a video of her pre-masticating food for her son Bear. So it's like the mama bird method of dropping chewed food into the baby's mouth. So is this a technique that you support? Uh, Not really. I know, I think, uh, you know, they, these, these rather extreme, they kind of come and go. Mm-hmm. They, they're in the fad category. Um, that's good, kind of back to basics, and that's why I kind of stick to that for parenting because it's been around for centuries. Mm-hmm. And, the, um, uh, and, and that's what I, I really liked about the article is that they got people thinking. And if you, you know, we have, we have problems in our society right now. We have, we have an epidemic, what I call the Ds, you know, ADD, ADHD, mm-hmm. OCD, BPD. We have uh, kids going to psychologists and psychiatrists at age five. We, we have this epidemic of behavioral problems. And, and that all, many of these come down to lack of empathy. Mm-hmm. These kids could did not have a connected start in life. So we need to make changes. Mm-hmm. You think that we're over over diagnosing those issues, or do you think that they do exist uh, well, as much I as we say they do? Exist. I think they really do exist. And um, you know, another thing we we found find that uh, mothers and fathers who attach one parent, they get so close to their children and they read their child, and they, they naturally go into more healthy things. For example, you, you won't see a type of parent uh, feed their children a lot of junk food. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a health issue too. Right. And it's because they just naturally, this is what I want to put into my child. I'm gonna put my milk into my child as long as I can, and then I'm gonna graduate, put real food instead of junk food into my child. So I see these as a side effect. I see these children uh, grow up to be a lot healthier because there's a lot of good health habits mm-hmm. in attachment parenting. 
Right. Well, we at Insiders Health always support healthy eating and healthy living, so that is one benefit to that. Um, now, I want to get, before we wrap, uh, your top parenting tip, if you could choose one. <laughs> well, what I would say is uh, whenever, it, you know, parenting is a series of reactions. My child does this, what do I do? When your child does something that needs to react, say throws a temper tantrum or something, mm -hmm. before reacting, take a deep breath and ask yourself, if I were my child, how would I want my mother or father to react? And you do it. Mm -hmm. Get behind the eyes of your child and imagine the effect of your action, and you'll always get it right. Mm -hmm. That's great advice, even for those of us who are not parents. I think taking a deep breath and taking time to think about your reaction is always a good thing. And tell our readers where they can find more. Well, you can our website, uh, askdrsears.com, uh, has a lot of information, askdrsears.com, our book, The Baby Book, The Parenting Book. Also, there's a worldwide organization now called Attachment Parenting. Uh, international, where there's a kind of parenting group in, in almost every neighborhood now, or certainly every city. Uh, attachmentparenting.org is their website. We can find a lot more about attachment parenting. Okay, well, no shortage of resources. Well, thank you again so much for speaking to us today. And again, I hope this turns out to be a very positive experience for you, and we'll look forward to seeing more of you on the pages of parenting magazines everywhere. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon, Dr. Bill. For more information, you can also go to insidershealth.com. From all of us here, I'm Kimberly Walston. Stay well.